Well, I want to thank you for joining me here on Washington Times Higher Ground. A lot to talk about. You have been dealing with a legal battle now. It has been a few years that you've been in the midst of this, and this battle is essentially over you expressing your Christian faith. And so let's just start. Let's start from the beginning. You sent a tweet, you wrote a pamphlet on marriage, and you gave an interview where you shared your views on homosexuality, and that led to really complete chaos. Take us back to the beginning where this all started. Yes, this process started over five years ago. Uh, and um, it was uh, the beginning of the, the this legal, legal case uh, was when the Evangelical Lutheran Church, the main church of Finland, decided to support financially and publicly uh, the Helsinki Pride Parade. And it was a disappointment and even shock to me and many others. Many of my friends uh, decided to resign the church. And I was also praying that what should I do now? <laughs> but uh, I was very worried about this uh, very public statement of the leadership of the church because I, I was worried that it will undermine people's trust on Bible and its authority. And then it would not be only about a marriage or gender, but also about path to salvation. And so I wrote um, a Twitter update. I took a a uh, photo from from the Bible, from from the first chapter of Romans, where Apostle Paul teaches about these issues, and and uh, just wrote a uh, question to the leadership of the church: that how does this fit to the foundation of the church? What you have decided, and after that, uh, some citizen made a criminal complaint, and the police started to investigate the case. At the beginning, I didn't believe it. I, I just read it from the newspaper that police has started to investigate the case. And I phoned to the policeman and he said, yes, yes, we are investigating it. But when it came into public, then there became more and more uh, criminal complaints about an old pamphlet that I had written already now 20 years ago and about the radio program and, and so on. And uh, it took one and a half year that the police investigated the case. I was interrogated in the police station altogether 13 hours about very theological issues, biblical issues. Uh, police was asking me that what is uh, the main message of the Book of Romans and so on. And... So they brought you in. They they bring you in. So you read about it first that they're investigating you. Um, and by the way, just so people have context here, you're a member of the Finnish parliament. You yeah. are an esteemed physician. You have been the secretary of the interior there in Finland. You are a prominent politician in Finland. So they're investigating you. You find this out. They then haul you into the police station and start questioning you about the Bible at that yeah. point. What was going through your mind as they're asking you questions about yeah. the Bible? Yes, it was very absurd and very unreal situation. I, I was thinking, it, it was like a dream. <laughs> I couldn't believe that this happens in Finland, which has long roots in Christianity and and uh, good reputation in rule of law and so on. And... Uh, then I was sitting there, the Bible was on the table, and, and the police was interrogating me about biblical issues, about my convictions about the Bible. Just some years ago, or some years before, I, I had been the boss of the police. I was <laughs> the minister of interior. So it was, it was really absurd. But... Um, in, in the same time, I have to say that uh, we had very good discussions with the policeman <laughs> because I had the possibility to tell him the whole message of the gospel because the book of Romans, it has been very important in my life. I have found the message of the gospel 
what what Jesus has done on the cross for me, uh, I have found it just from the book of Romans. So I I I I could tell him all the story, <laughs> and but uh, in fact the police didn't find any crime from my writings, and the police said that if it is up to him, you would not sit here. But the prosecutor general. Uh, ordered the police to continue and continue the, this this investigation, and then the prosecutor general decided uh, to file up charges. And I have been twice in court. First in you've Helsinki. won, and you've won, you've won two times in court. And and I yeah. want to talk about that in a minute because. But what was the actual? What were the actual charges? Because you again, it's a tweet, it's a pamphlet. You're sharing your faith. What were they accusing you of specifically? Yes, they are accusing me uh, breaking against the law about agitation against minorities. We have that kind of law in Finland, as in almost all European countries, and um, so it can bring up to two years jail or heavy fines. And uh, it is some kind of hate speech law. Uh, so I, I was yeah. accused of hate speech, but I have to say that I have not said anything ugly or hate speech against any people. And I have all the time I have said that I believe, and it is my conviction, that all people are equal and all people are valuable, created by God as his image. And we all are also sinners. And we are all in need of grace. So, so it, it, it is. It is about the Bible, and in fact, also uh, the um, Finnish broad, public broadcasting company, when when it um, brought news about this trial in in Helsinki District Court, it named the secular mainstream media named this uh, the, the Bible trial. The Bible is on the trial. So it is not only me, it is the Bible and its message that, that is now in, on trial in Finland. Well, it sounds like they were they're asking you questions about scripture and what the Bible says. They're asking, you know, all of these sorts of things. You were speaking your belief based on what the Bible clearly says on these issues. They didn't like that. You know, it's interesting. The police officer said you wouldn't have been there if he had, you know, if it were up to them. But it, but it wasn't up to them. You went on trial. You won the trial. They appeal the trial. You go to court again and you win. We all assumed, and I've been covering your story for a long time, that the story would have ended there. After two losses, you would think, okay, this is not a case that is going to be winnable. It's also, I think, for the rest of the Western world watching this a little terrifying to watch somebody like you, a prominent politician who simply shared their religious views end up on trial. They then appealed it to the Supreme Court of Finland, which is what you're dealing with now. What was your reaction after winning twice in court to hear earlier this year that they were going to be appealing it to the Supreme Court? Yes, I. it was a little bit un unbelievable because... Uh, I, I got very clear acquittals from both of these courts. They were unanimous. There were altogether six judges, and they didn't find any crime <laughs> from my, my writings. And in fact, they proved that many of these accusations were false. They, they, they were lies, what, what the prosecutor tried to say. For example, the prosecutor uh, uh, claimed that I had said that God has not even created homosexual people. Of course, I have not said anything like that. So there were there, there were lies <laughs> about my my statements. But I I think that um, they are looking for some kind of precedent because this is also a very historical case uh, in in Finland and. Uh, of course, I'm now uh, praying and hoping that I would get the third victory because it would it it would give a very uh, strong precedent, a legal guide for 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 the future. 
possible similar cases in the in the future also in finland but but also in in other european countries which have similar laws and i know that the christians and also the lgbt people in european countries they are waiting for the result of the supreme court because it is very very crucial what will be the final final result yeah and and i mean what's your fear if you were to lose this case and i know you're going to keep fighting if you do but if you were to lose this case what do you fear will happen in other countries because look it's not just finland like you were saying the rest of europe and america there are a lot of these little cases that are popping up even in america right that are happening not quite like yours but but similar in some ways what do you fear will happen if you lose the case uh, I, I think that it would have very very dangerous uh consequences because uh I would even say that it would start a time of persecution of Christians in Finland and in 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 European countries because then it would mean that you you are not anymore allowed to agree publicly with the Bible in, in on on these uh, co- um, uh, controversial issues of of today and. Um, Even the police who interrogated me, even the police said that if my writings would be banned, then we should also ban the Bibles. It would mean also that. So I I, I think that it, it would have very dangerous ramifications. Yeah. What what sort of support are you getting from other people in Finland? And particularly, obviously, I know Christians are supporting you. Are you getting support from the LGBTQ community, other people who maybe would disagree with you? You know, I would, I'm really curious to sort of hear how people are reacting. Yes, I I have got a lot of support, of course, from Christians. Uh, I have got thousands and thousands of messages of people who tell that they are praying for me and but also from peoples of other faiths or or peoples without faith <laughs> and and also from LGBT people there there for example uh, there was um a parliamentarian uh, in 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 our parliament who who, who was himself in gay marriage Uh, but he was publicly supporting me, even though that he said that he disagrees with me. But but he defended my freedom uh, to express my convictions. So and and I I have got also support from many others. But most of these have been in private. So there are many people who are afraid to support me publicly. Uh, many prominent people. Who, who privately say that they they hope that I would win and and they support me, but they they are afraid to say it in in public. That's, and yes, and, oh, and that's sad. Then, yes, that is sad. And then I then I have to say that our our mainstream media, the most prominent newspapers, and 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 uh, also uh, our public broadcasting company they have taken a stand against me so they are hoping they hope that i i would get some punishment for it this what so i have two more questions for you what punishment is still on the table obviously you could have faced two years in in prison i know fines what if you were to lose this case what could happen in terms of that punishment uh The, the prosecutor is demanding a heavy fine, the heaviest that we have in in our law. But um, I, I think that the most uh, dangerous consequence and punishment would be the ban uh, to to my writings, in order to take away uh, my Twitter postings and and my book and. And it would not be only a punishment uh, against me. It would be also against thousands and thousands of Christians who have 
who have published similar uh, opinions and and statements. So it 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 would be uh, the most uh, <laughs> the worst consequence of of, of this. Final question for you, because you ha- <clears throat> you have been fighting this for five years, essentially now. And a lot of times people want to throw in the towel because it's easier to give up than it is to be. I mean, look, you're at the center of media on this. The entire world is talking about it, not just within Finland. Sometimes it's easier to not fight the battle. What keeps you fighting this battle and pushing back and not backing down and offering a fake apology or whatever you could do to get out of it? Why do you keep fighting? Yes, I have to tell that, in fact, the police, when, when he interrogated me, he each time said that you have two weeks' time to take away your writings. So then we will, this is over then. But I said that uh, I, I will not, uh, uh, I, I will stand on, on, on these uh, biblical teachings. And I have had all the time very strong feeling that this has been in God's hands. This has been my calling. We are now living on that time, in, in that, time, that kind of time that we need to fight for these freedoms and also these uh, truths of the Bible. And I have got a lot of joy and encouragement because this this process has given um, so many chances to me in public to testify about gospel about Jesus who is the solution to the problem of sin. So I, I think that God has given me more than I have lost <laughs> during during this this process. So well, that is an. In- you're grateful. I mean, it's incredible that you can be grateful and positive and, and faith forward in all of this. And we're going to continue to cover this story as there are new developments right now. You are waiting on the Supreme Court and we may not hear for a while. Um, really, even court dates, you don't really have those set yet. So we will see where things go. I really appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you so much.